see a lot of people is arriving already. So we will be starting up very briefly. So uh, while the rest arrive, we actually have um, a little bit of uh, piano music for you. So uh, we're streaming here today from, uh, from Doc One in Aarhus, where we had hoped to welcome everyone. But since that is not possible, uh, we have uh, a little bit of uh, music for you. So that is the EU hymn, uh, also known as O to Joy. So, uh, so this is for you. Wow, welcome to the IoT Crawler event. It's really fantastic and it's a fantastic opener because we have started with the European hymn. And this is a European project, research project, which have been only made possible because we have the support of the European Commission and the European Research Horizon 2020 program. And by that, today in very S special conditions because normally we have planned, we would like to do this event, of course, as a real event. But as we know, this is this crazy pandemic situation. So we are on an online event. But however, it's a little bit like the Eurovision, Eurovision Song Contest for research. And I'm so happy. My name is uh, Mirko. I'm one of the co-moderator together with Marianne. Uh, I'm here in Stuttgart, Germany. And Marianne, I'm calling Denmark Aarhus. Are you there? Yes, good morning. Uh, my name is Mayene and uh, I work for the city of Aarhus and I'm presenting here from Aarhus, uh, from our library, uh, Doc One. Very cool, Marianne. And, yep. And uh, it's so cool that we, yeah, with all the technology, we can do as well a rather special program here for all the people. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, what is IoT Crawler about? This is about uh, secure and privacy respecting search and it has been it had been a three years uh, research program and before we start uh, with the presentations I would like just to introduce shortly to all the partners who made this fantastic research program possible and by that maybe we'll show just in a slide shortly uh, the partners 
And I will start uh, with the research partners from the university, which had been the University of Murcia. Uh, we had in England, uh, UK, the University of Surrey. We had the Aarhus University in Denmark, uh, the Hochschule Osnabrück, Germany. And then a lot of enterprise partners as the NEC uh, research center here in Germany. We have Siemens as an industrial brand as well in Germany. We have the Aarhus community as one of the project partners and HET, Odin's from Spain, and last but not least, Digital Works, where I'm uh, representing the company as well. And this has been all made possible with the support of the European Commission in the Horizon 2020 research program. Thanks uh, very much for all that support that we could work on this fantastic project. And by that, I would just uh, like to hand over to Marianne um, to tell a yes. little bit more about the program we are now expecting the past uh, the couple of minutes. Yes, thank you, Mirko. So uh, today we will really talk about the IoT crawler and the, the innovations and solutions, as you know. So we will focus very much on these seven use cases that we will present to you later. Uh, because that is really the best way to show actually uh, what what the IoT crawler is capable of. And as you know, that is the result of three years of hard work. So we're really thankful for all of, of our partners to make this possible. Uh, I will just mention a few practical things for all of you. Um, so uh, we are recording part of this webinar. So actually this whole first part, we will be recording. Um, primarily for our own benefit, but uh, also so that we can share this with you and those who cannot be here today afterwards. So we will be sending you a link when we are uh, done with everything today. Um, then we kindly ask you to keep off your microphones if you're not presenting, and the same goes for your cameras. Um, Yes, especially if you don't want to be part of the recording, I think that would be very practical, but also to keep the focus on the presenters. Uh, so when we divide you into breakout sessions at 10.50, that's when the recording will end. And then we plan to be done completely with the, the feedback sessions uh, at 11.30. But after the breakout sessions, you will not be returning to this main, main session. So that will be the end of our program. Um, and before we give the word to our project coordinator, we just have a few words actually from our users that uh, we have received uh, a while back. So I hope you have it ready Ralph, somewhere while I just say a little bit about it. Uh, so really the best way also for us uh, to understand the potentials at the very beginning. So now it's a completely different story, but at the beginning, we also really wanted people's feedback, those who know about IoT, which is a lot of you who is also joining us today. Um, what potentials do you see in the IoT crawler in having a search engine for the internet of things? So I hope you have it ready, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> So I think, Marianne, we have a little technical pro pro uh, problem, but that's why it's live. Uh, Ralph was telling me that he has a problem with uh, showing the presentation there. But however, um, this is a live show. So um, first of all, thanks for this great introduction. And it's really fantastic to have a look into the doc one. And um, it's really great. So I think the first important point is to know what is IoT crawler all about? What is the idea? Um, of IoT crawler, um, what is the technical in behind? Because this is about searching in the internet of things. And this is a lot of related towards security and privacy as well, because I mean, we're dealing with a lot of data and you don't want to share your data uh, to people or entities who are not trustworthy. And as you know, the internet has really a problem with IoT and sharing data. A lot of data is shared to unknown parties or parties who are not allowed to receive the data from a user perspective. And by that, it's a pleasure to have Antonio Scarmetta here from the U University of Murcia. 
And he's the project coordinator of IoT Crawler. And Antonio, so I'm calling Spain Murcia. Are you there, Spain? <laughs> Here am I. Thanks. Uh, welcome uh, to all of you, and thanks Mirko and, and Marian for the for the introduction. So, as already was mentioned, my my name is Antonio Scarmita. I'm, I'm here professor at the University of Murcia in Spain, in the, in the southeast of Spain. And for me, it's a pleasure, in that sense, to to have lead this uh, great team. That uh, now we are ending our our history, but uh, that but I think that uh, uh, already we have a lot of fruitful uh, collaboration that will come next uh, because I think it uh, it has been very 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 uh, uh, I would say uh, uh, challenging the activity that we have done and, and how uh, how we have worked, you know. And also I, I would like to thank here the presence of Joel Vacker, that is the, our project officer. Uh, he already has support us uh, during all these periods, uh, specifically now in the last year that with all this pandemic situation that, uh, you know, everything is a little bit uh, uh, more challenging than, than normally. And he will later, he will provide some, some words also uh, regarding the, the, the project and also in the context of, the, of, the, of this call and this kind of project in the, in the, for the commission in that sense. So let me make very, very shortly some key ideas about uh, what is uh, it is IoT crawler, in that sense. By the way, as already mentioned here, you can see the distribution of the different partners uh, that uh, we already have uh, in, in 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 the project, where we cover, uh, I would say, the whole range of uh, European uh, countries uh, with div high diversity also on the on the vision and the and, and the issues that they can they can bring to the project. Um, so basically, when we came with IoT crawler, I mean it was I mean four years ago indeed, or late, maybe more. Um, um, uh, we understood that there was a, a, a quite relevant problem to be tried to be solved in that sense in the context of the IoT. No? Um, um, you, you all know that we are in the, in the new, what was called in some sense, a new generation internet, if you like, uh, basically where we are going to, the, to, to a scenario where with, uh, with multitude of new entities, devices, uh, uh, um, um, and objects uh, that are connected to the internet, what they are publishing and providing a lot of data. Uh, and that's why the connection between big data and, and internet of things is, is quite uh, uh, challenging in, in, in this opportunity. But if we look at this stage, uh, also we, in some way, one of the main problems is that there's um, a quite anarchy, if you like, on the, on the management of all this information in some sense. It is, if, if you think about, and you go back in the, in the time, it's something like what happened when uh, uh, the web uh, appear in some sense, uh, 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 web 2.0 was like uh, the, the new wave, where in some sense there was an intention to create some kind of a structure of the uh, uh, info space um, in that moment based on, on web pages uh, and, and web services, uh, uh, servers, etc. So now the situation is a little bit similar in that sense. Oh, we are growing, we are creating a lot of connectivity now with new devices, providing data, etc. But I mean, we need a way to, to facilitate how all this information, how all this data could be managed. And managed in two ways, how to structure, I would say, this, this information, but also, and more important now, how this information can be controlled in the way they, it has been disclosed. So how to provide mechanisms that facilitate uh, to, author, uh, to identify who is authorized to provide data, and, and, and in the other way around, who is able to access and either to search over that data. Because I mean, with the, with the amount of information, we need to create some mechanism of control about, uh, around it. So in that sense, our vision, and that's an, I think is totally valid still on, on, on this moment, because I mean, the, the, the internet is growing and growing and, it's in, and more uh, um, uh, uh, devices are being integrated, is that we need to have a distributed, secure, and intelligent search engine uh, uh, in order to, to support this, uh, this environment of the IoT. In general, IoT, I'm thinking also in general about data, uh, the uh, data providers, if you like, no? in that sense. Uh, the, uh, IoT is one example of this data provider, but there are say, many others. No? So our idea uh, was to develop a, a, what we call a next generation of internet search engine that support uh, uh, discovery, search, and integration of all this data. So this is the key idea 
that are behind the definition of what IoT crawler is, is, is trying to do in, the, in, in that sense. So in order to do that, uh, and you will see later when, we, when you saw the different presentations in some sense, what we already have tried to, uh, to define is what we call a framework in that sense, because at the end, it's, it's, it's not that we create a totally new engine and, and, or a totally new, new way to, to manage the data. It's basically that we, are, uh, we define a collection of enablers that can be uh, combined in, in different ways in order to support main functionalities that we understand are, are, are key in order to solve the, the challenge I, I already mentioned in that sense. And, and a little bit, I have tried here to, to aggregate this block of, uh, of results um, uh, uh, in order to, 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 for you to understand later when you saw the different um, demonstrators and the different um, use case uh, MVP that we are going to present, how we are using these enablers in order to demonstrate its functionality on different contexts in some sense. And I think that this is quite important uh, uh, um, also, from uh, uh, and also for, uh, for for you to understand the possibilities that IoT crawler can provide, so that either later you can think about how you can integrate or can use or reuse some uh, of the results of IoT crawler. Uh, that, as you can see here, we already have uh, open source; it's already accessible. Most of the code you can already um, uh, download. Uh, some of the different enablers so that you can use them on your own benefits in your own business in your own uh, um, areas uh, um, and and that feedback is also quite important for us so i think already marianne already mentioned one of the objective of also of this uh, webinar is that later we have these uh, break uh, breakout sessions where basically we will be uh, uh, aggregated uh, over different topics and we would like to to get more feedback from your side also through a questionnaire that later we will show you so that we can um, uh, also get information about the, the, the possibilities that you see about using this technology on your own, uh, I would say applications, sectors, or your own uh, um, uh, um, uh, area that you are working on. So basically, sorry, coming again. So basically we, I can uh, uh, here try to aggregate that uh, um, what in one size and one key piece that we already have uh, generated as part of IoT Crawler is the, the development of the, 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 a distributed uh, 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 mechanism to aggregate information from existing sources. So basically this is that we haven't created a new web, we haven't created a new platform. We basically have provided solution uh, based on the interoperability technology, like uh, for example, NSG, uh, NGS ILD, that for us has been one of the key concepts we have uh, uh, worked around in order to allow the crawling and the integration of uh, different data coming from different sources so that we are able to aggregate all this information in a way that later through the use of some kind of uh, meta uh, data management, uh, we can be able to provide functionality for discovery, for search, and either for uh, security and privacy data management as part of this data that are being aggregated in that sense. So as you can see here is one Key, key piece is the, the, this, this framework that is basically the, the way to, to collect and to aggregate, I would say, and to represent uh, uh, different, different data coming from different sources, how to integrate inside this mechanism uh, some kind of enablers that allow to provide security and privacy in order to register the data, in order to search the data, in order to discover the data, in order to access the data in that sense. So one important piece, as already was mentioned by Mirko, is that we have a collection of enablers that are in the back end, if you like, that allow that all the process can be uh, controlled and can be uh, defined over a certain kind of policies in order to identify who can access and what can be accessed in, in that sense. As I already mentioned, also, we have done a, 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 a quite significant work on, on providing semantic models and metrics in order to, uh, to provide and to enrich the information that we are gathering from the different source so that later we are able to over this new this data this metadata we are able to create solution for crawling indexing ranking uh, as you will see later in that sense and it's important is that all these scenarios are also quite scalable because we always have thought about a federated scenario basically not a centralized approach but something that allow a real federated model that, uh, uh, that uh, bring data from different domains from different uh, sources i already mentioned and how to uh, integrate all this through uh, through this interoperability mechanism. And finally, to provide specific tools, as you will see later, 
to uh, give advanced solution for uh, for for context awareness search for monitoring fall reduction recovery for example in case of uh, data that are being missed or are or that are being uh, um, uh, failed on certain moment so that we can have a substitute uh, 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 of this uh, uh, real time data provide virtual sensors uh, vision for example in some of the cases and obviously provide some kind of uh, uh, tools for the search in uh, in this case based on graphql uh, mechanism in that sense so all of this as you can see here uh, is the collection of enablers that at the end uh, as already and you will see later on the on the on the different uh, mvps uh, can have uh, can be used on different combinations in uh, in order to provide solution on on over different sectors as you will see like smart energy smart city e health environment industry for the zero um, um, etc okay so basically the, uh, uh, the this is the I mean I'm not going to go in detail everything is being described and you can go later as you as I mentioned to the to the our repository but at the end the framework is a collection of as, I said, as you can see here of, a, of an architecture uh, that you can see here where we already have provide solution that from the crawling to the uh, semantic enrichment to the management of the data on the on the metadata repository that is totally federated and distributed and over which we are able to create uh, use different tools uh, for monitoring, for indexing, for ranking, etc. So at the end, that uh, this component can be used by ap by application that you will see later. And in all of them, very clearly, a collection of security and privacy enablers that are giving uh, uh, support so over the different layers in order to manage the data at the uh, and, and on the different aspect that uh, we want to cope in this uh, in, in this project. And just to conclude from my side, as I already mentioned, uh, quite important. In many cases, it's, it's not something obvious because, as I already mentioned, it's part of the of the infrastructure of the backing that we have in the in the in the solution. Uh, but the security, privacy, and trust is quite uh, uh, surrounding all the different aspects in that sense. So we have used concrete technologies. You can see here. I mean. Uh, uh, for privacy awareness uh, communication, we are using CPIV. We have uh, developed some lightweight access control scheme specifically focused on the IoT in, in order to manage the registering at the access and the discovery in that sense. We are using blockchain for building the trust on the federated domain, for example, and, and to define policies, how the data can be shared by different, by different domains. And at the end, the important thing is what, what is the result? As you can see here on the collection of block is that we can control who can access the data, we can uh, identify which resources are being accessible by the users and what not. So the, the idea in some sense is that maybe there is an object that don't want to be accessible by certain certain entities, for example, in that sense of so how to define that kind of policy, how to provide data disclosure that could be controlled by, in this case, by, by certain policies, identifying uh, to whom I want to share and with whom not I don't want to share in that sense. And also data providers can decide which users, which roles are able to access the corresponding data in their site, and they can share this with the other domain so that we can have this federated approach that I, I just mentioned in that sense. Okay, so as I already said, in many cases, not quite evident, but, but you will see that most of the functionality are behind the scene and is are supporting uh, all the different uh, mechanisms that uh, we, 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 uh, we demonstrate through the MVPs. So that's all from my side. Again, thanks uh, for all of you for, uh, for coming here. Thanks, obviously, for our private officer for, for, for supporting us and, to, and, and, and being so responsive. Uh, to some of our, our requests and uh, any please again uh, as I already mentioned it will be important that when we finish to the, 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 the presentation also you continue and go goes to uh, to any of the different breakout sessions that are will be focused on, on on concrete discussion so that we can receive your feedback and as I already mentioned also for you to provide your feedback through the questionnaire that we will show you later so that we also can 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 understand better new areas new uh, opportunities that we can have based on the solution that we present here and could and, and also maybe that will bring us collaboration in the future with many of you on, on new uh, new uh, opportunities new challenges that we can have together okay thanks again and and, uh, and hope you enjoy the rest of the webinar uh, there is a question for you antonio uh, i just wanted to say before um, before i give the word back to you mirko uh, from Lindsay from NEC, but it's a very, rather specialized question that you would uh, really like to ask us later. So uh, Lindsay, I suggest 
for for something so specialized that we send you an email afterwards if that is okay yeah anyway i mean very shortly because this question because basically i we are already involved on in this discussion lindsay you know that my colleague juan antonio is already working with you and and specifically all this work that we already have done as part of iot crawler is quite aligned with what is being done on the etc that's it yeah So, wow, Antonio, thank you very much for this presentation and as well for all the people who are in the audience, if you have questions, just post the questions in the chat and we want to try to yeah, spread them or, or address them to the right people so that they can answer your questions during this event. So no problem, just paste it here. So before we continue, um, we had a, a small technical problem in before to show the quotes um, of the best yeah, yeah, of, of users here of the IoT crawler. And I would like to ask if you can uh, just bring in the quotes again. Is it possible? We can imagine today how could be internet without Google as a engine that make easier to discover and understand all the content of the internet. So imagine all this transformation for billions of devices, and if we can transfer all the capacities like Google today to discover the devices, interconnect them. Of course, it's not very safety you discover suddenly one of your devices in a explorer. That is the reason that all the security and privacy management, all these features that as IoT Crawlers is doing are crucial features to guarantee that this Excel engine could be successful in the future. So really looking forward to see the result of this project and how to apply in the future. Okay, I think that uh, from a customer perspective, one of the key points would be privacy and then security of the data, also ownership, so that we are sure that uh, the data we are populating to this search engine uh, remains in, in, in our control. Uh, also, I think that the integration of different domains, uh, data, data coming from different domains, could be very, very uh, appealing for the for the end user because they they, they can compose services that uh, nowadays are, are impossible to, to conceive. So I see the imminent value in this comparisons con concept, where you actually have publicly available data uh, that you can use, either as a reference sensor that you can validate your own data against, but also a way to maybe figure something new out. So you can take a traffic counter, for example, and if I have air quality, I can start looking for patterns. So checking maybe some kind of uh, parameters, so sensor parameters that's not uh, readily available for a company like ours, but in a sense, use this uh, platform to actually correlate them, figure out how it performs, or maybe find patterns that we can use in our development perhaps. I think it's a very interesting project because uh, in IoT you have so many different objects, different data sets, different formats. So imagine uh, what it means to have a search engine that can uh, help you search and find information across all this uh, heterogeneous uh, landscape. Hey, I think uh, very good to hear and, and listen to people who are in the IoT space who are just giving us the feedback how important the project is and that there's a really, yes, big uh, value in behind the world to, uh, in behind this project to bring in privacy, trust and security into the search of IoT data. And by that voices from outside of the project, I would like to hand over again to Denmark, Aarhus, to Marian. I think we have now the next that we will talk with the European Commission, um, Marian. Yes, thank you, Miyako. Uh, so now we have the honor of uh, uh, hearing a few perspectives from our project coordinator, Joel Baquet. So thank you so much, uh, Joel, for being here today. Uh, Joel is uh, from the European Commission, DG Connect, um, and he's in charge of the research and innovation policy for the Internet of Things. So you are an expert in your own right. Um, so let me start from as by asking you from your perspective, uh, what were your first thoughts when you heard about the IoT crawler project? Thank you, Marianne. Good morning. Uh, Could you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, well, first, thank you very much for the invitation being here. Um, of course, I'm the project officer of this project. I have been following this project since uh, the, the beginning. 
uh, I think the many things have been mentioned already by Antonio, by all the different, you know, testimony, but I want, I want to come back on this, basically the three main potentials of this project from the start we, we, we spotted. Th those three, I can say they are, the project was very ambitious, quite innovative, and with significant impact. Let me elaborate a little bit more on each of them, ambitious innovation and, and impact. On the ambitions, I mean, it's clear that developing a framework which was, has been presenting by Antonio uh, for interconnecting IoT platforms where it's possible to search, to discover, uh, index as well, massive IoT data stream. I mean, this is fantastic. This is really extremely ambitious. As it was mentioned by some of the uh, uh, people before, it looks like an IoT Google, you know? So it's very ambitious for that. In addition, this will not work without the point which was mentioned by many people already, security privacy issue. And this aspect were tackled right from the beginning from the project. This is really, was really key. Now on, on the innovative aspect, well, a characteristic of the IoT market is that the market is quite fragmented with huge number of solutions and platforms. In short, I must say we probably have too many IoT platforms and which are not interoperable. It's not the fact that we have too many, it's the fact that they are not interoperable, in fact. And IoT crawler represents an innovative approach. Why? Because it's, the idea is to integrate, interoperate across the different platforms with solution for discovering and integration of data. And of course, the, the, adding the, secure, the service and for the legacy and new systems. Now on the impact, uh, we consider that it would have a, quite significant impact uh, on the market. Interconnecting various platforms will create the emergence of open market. Open market means new business in IoT data. The new market will be created mainly with a crawling and indexing service across, across the different platforms. So I'm very keen on now looking at the end of, the, of this presentation on the different use cases to see really how this was really at the end, how it works. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Joel. Um, so when we look to the future a little bit, um, would you say that you still see now a few years down the line since we started, is there still a premise for, for the IoT crawler? How does it fit with other IoT agendas? Is the timing right, would you say, apart from the things that you have already highlighted? I think the, the trends currently is really to move from the, the cloud to the edge computing. Uh, it's not that, that the case right now, uh, because now what's happening now, about 80% of the data is processed on the cloud and only 20% of the data processing really take place on, on the IoT device, the smart device. Uh, the explosion of IoT device has generated a lot of data. We are creating a lot of data now, you, you may ask the question, does it make sense to send all those data, which are, you know, collecting by the uh, IoT device, does it make sense to send everything in the cloud for the processing? Considering that many applications have very strong real-time requirements, uh, well, you, you, may, you may argue about it, about it now. The pro in addition, we see clearly that the processors are, are getting more and more powerful. So, we have the data, the data storage capacity. We have the computing power at the edge. That's why we can, you know, we can think about these trends toward moving cloud computing now further down to the edge. Uh, also, in view, we have to consider the, the the aspect of reducing the environmental footprint. We need to process the data where the data is collected. So, in short, the, in short, there is this clear trends to bring the computing resources cloud closer to the, to the data. Now, on your last question, how does the IoT crawler uh, fit within this agenda? Well, data will be processed at the edge in the future, yes, but still the edge platform will be provided by different vendors and the issue of interoperability will remain. So IoT crawler with its open source approach, as well as a strong data protection approach, could be an excellent selling point and a real opportunity to strengthen the European IoT platform market. We know 
how essential is the security and privacy aspects. An IoT crawler is an enabler for the secure, and I think on, on the secure access to data sources and an enabler for managing data streams associated to certain properties of quality and information. In that sense, it can complement other IoT projects, more focus on specific aspects of IoT, you know, vertical sectors and so on. But IoT crawler could provide, you know, this kind of a framework. Yeah. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. You did uh, very much. Thank you so much, uh, Joel. It was very nice to, uh, to have your perspectives um, on something that is very difficult for us even to, to answer. So uh, you know so much about the EU and, uh, and uh, these agendas. So uh, this was hugely valuable. And uh, let's not keep you waiting uh, much longer. So now I give the word back to you, Mirko, and, uh, and the next point on our, our agenda. Yeah. Thank you, Mar Marianne, and uh, thank you, Joelle, for uh, giving us these insights and feedbacks as well. Um, now, as you have a little bit more information about IoT crawler and what we are doing and what we did, we would like to ask you as an audience about uh, what do you think? Um, is IoT crawler a good solution and would you use it? And by that, we have prepared a Slido um, so um, you will see the link to the Slido in the chat now. And as well, uh, Ralph, maybe you can sh switch uh, the screen as well to the Slido so that we see it actively going. So here is our uh, Slido poll uh, and the question, how do you score the potential potentials of IoT quarter? And we would just like to ask you to give a small rating on um, if you like uh, IoT crawler, the idea of IoT crawler, if you can think about using the IoT crawler framework, or if you say, well, no, I don't care, um, um, it's not so interesting, it's all fine, uh, but we would like to engage you to give us a little um, feedback here on the Slido. And meanwhile, you are maybe using the link or you can use as well slido.com and then type in the hashtag seven six four two eight one that's uh our hashtag for the poll so please uh, just take a little time for this interaction before we continue with our um program here and i see the first polls are coming in that's great um and it's Marianne, I think it's a little bit really as the European Song Contest. <laughs> we see the polls coming in. Hey, I would like to see the countries as well. Uh, no, it's cool. So uh, I'm really happy to see that people are um, joining the poll here. We will give you just a couple of seconds to give your uh, answers here. And um, thank you very much for interacting. So use the Slido link uh, in the chat or use uh, go to slido.com seven six four two eight one that's the slido number and we see the polls coming in so uh it's almost a result and we have seen uh which is a really nice feedback as well that uh it seems to be that iot crawler is a very good fit and we are um addressing an important topic so if you like to engage, um, the results of the project are available as open source on Git. So, um, but this is a very good point now to step in more into detail, to have a look on the applications of IoT crawler. And by that we have prepared as well, uh, some interesting presentations now. And we'll start now with this more uh, practical views on the project. And by that, we would like to start uh, with the presentation on how IoT crawler can be applied on smart home and building technologies. And by that, we have um, three fantastic uh, presenters here. Um, it's a one presentation from the project partner HET. Um, we have as well uh, a presentation from uh, the Aarhus University about uh, smart booking systems. And we have the University of Surrey who will tell us a little bit more about how IoT crawler could be used in the application of home healthcare and um, P 
people supporting at home. And by that, I would like uh, to introduce our first uh, presentation on um, this smart home and building topic. And uh, by that, it's up to you, Martin and Pavel by HET. You're welcome. Uh, please tell us a little bit more. Thank you, uh, Mirko, for this introduction. I hope you can all see my slides. Um, I'm very happy now to introduce our smart home use case. Um, and very briefly, um, obviously, a lot of people have been working on this during the course of this project, which uh, was now is now running more than three years. Um, but now, these days, in this meeting, you have Pavel Smirnov um, here, who is uh, the technical lead of the project, and myself, um, I'm leading the team, uh, leading all the public uh, funded research and also responsible for the data management information architecture within HET. Now, very briefly, before we um, come to the actual use case, HET um, International is a company that focuses on IoT analytics. Over, um, our, over the years that we have been founded, we have really done a lot of project in virtually all IoT domains that you can imagine. We have applied our analytics, our um, um, infrastructure there in, in many different um, scenarios. Um, so it's uh, very interesting for us now also to look into this smart home domain, um, see what analytics we can do and especially how we can uh, deal with the data management there. And um, so, yes, we have been yeah, also branded as a, as a cool vendor in, in IoT analytics. Now, let's go straight to our challenge. So the challenge that we wanted to specifically address in the uh, smart home domain was to increase the energy awareness. This comes from the background that we have already done some uh, development and research and uh, in this area in, as part of another project. And so we looked specifically on this use case, but also at the same time wanted to understand how we how these smart home environments generally look like and what other issues are there so if we're looking at the stakeholders we were particularly the primary stakeholders are obviously the smart home owners um, who are interested in understanding their energy consumption and uh, by that really reducing their energy costs and uh, possibly the carbon footprint now, what's interesting there is that um, if we look um, what smart home owners actually are, they're really smart home power users. And for them specifically, these are people who have more than 200 devices. And for them, it's also like an issue to keep track of all of them and um, have a better overview and knowledge and manage and see what's going there. In a previous project, we actually had problem that um, we couldn't keep track anymore of where these, um, we used some smart plugs where these to what kind of devices there were attached. So this is a really, a very real problem. And then uh, the service providers or the, those who are actually providing this as an application or as a, as, a, as a service to these end users, they are primarily interested in getting a very fast time to market. So you want to have very minimal costs in development and, and effort in providing your service. You, they want to focus on the features and on the device integration. And as you can, can imagine in these environments, in a smart home environment, privacy and security is particularly important. I could associate that obviously with each of the uh, stakeholders, especially the people, um, the, 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 the smart home owners, because if we're measuring um, energy, if we're making even inferences about activities, then this is obviously um, a very security and uh, privacy related issues. And as a matter of fact, we had to deal with that in the project um, very thoroughly. Um, so this is like a, a very important requirement to have that built in, but also um, it can be quite a differentiator. We'll quickly come back towards the end. If you can have a fine grain control over the data and con can are able to control who sees what to what degree. Now, there are a couple of other elect, uh, stakeholders, the electric, uh, electric utility company 
East, for instance. Um, they have an opportunity here in general to provide value added services. In fact, we have been working together with them on some, uh, to, to some degree to really have a differentiator that goes beyond the uh, pure commodity of providing um, uh, electricity to the houses, but also there's a very specific side um, that this can help in the demand side management. If you're more interested in the details of that, then I invite you to the breakout sessions. And finally, cities and governments. Um, um, we have actually been doing that in a previous project in Gross Smarter, where the objective was to reduce the overall um, uh, energy consumption and the uh, and, and 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 so this can really help incentivize and achieve these goals. And finally, there's also the gateway manufacturers or vendors that, in a similar way as uh, the electric utility companies, but of course with a different uh, focus, can extend their services and provide uh, additional value added service on top of their um, devices. Now, what did we actually do? The solution that we are provided that, the, that you're able to see in the breakout session is the Grow Smarter Energy Insights Dashboard. So what this gives you is actually a lot of information about any energy metering devices that you have. So first of all, it collects this energy meeting, it visualizes you the data in real time, and it provides you various insights, typically on a very fine granular level, on a device level, and also showing you um, some basic analytics that we built in, for instance, usage of certain devices, how often you have used them. And what's important from an IoT crawler's perspective is that specifically for the IoT crawler project, we um, added um, what we call a semantic annotation component of IoT crawler within um, this application. So what this actually does, and you can see it here in the screen where you see this auto detection capability. So basically whenever there are changes or whether new devices come, it gives you um, an, an, a detection of what this device type are, where the devices are located, and for smart plugs, what type of appliances are connected. And then this is all reflected here in a hierarchical view um, in the menu. So that was basically the addition we did as part of the IoT crawler project. Now, how did we actually arrive to that and how did we all test that? So what we did is um, specifically for the project, we decided that we run the whole thing as a public service. So previously it was just um, uh, uh, designed to be used by a uh, specific people in, uh, in the Cologne uh, area, but as part of IoT crawler, we made really a public testbed out of it, and we have been running that for more than uh, or about a year. In the end, we had 60 connected homes, and you can see there's more registered users. Um, um, the reason for that was that we had li to limit um, the registrations um, for cost reasons. And you also get a little bit of an impression of what kind of devices were connected. You may notice that these are not 3,400 devices in total here. This is because this is like an earlier uh, capture of the devices. Now, um, in order to participate, you there was a prerequisite, so you needed a specific gateway um, from a specific uh, vendor with whom uh, we collaborated. And um, that actually we used in order to get our users, we used this vendor's community and we were targeting German users with that. Now, what did the users actually say? In order to assess that, we did a survey with uh, where 22 people responded and where we had various questions, um, about 21 questions related to their experience, specific feedback for the dashboard and um, their willingness to pay. And we got feedbacks like that the perfect home should work invisibly and automated. So the less you have to think about it, the better. Um, effortless integration into existing homes. So people were really concerned about um, having a nice working um, system, which um, with the current solution um, is not really the case. So you still need a lot of tweaking and uh, technical expertise to get everything running. So 
maybe as one important result there, as you can see, we also asked one of these questions, where do you actually see the benefits? And uh, most responses we got for actually comparing and analyzing the energy consumption, which is good from an application point of view, because this tells us we did it, uh, we did it right. But then we also got um, a lot of votes for exactly addressing these kind of feedbacks for having a better device uh, overview and automatic device de detection, which is as a matter of fact, something that was brought into by IoT Trawler, which um, emphasizes the, the search and integration capabilities um, that we are doing within the project. So what you can conclude from that is that it really helps to better manage and organize large number of smart home devices. Um, so and with my last slide, I'm coming to the potential. So basically, we see two exploitation routes. So one is actually going towards the direction of smart home services, which means um, that uh, there's a potential to commercialize that. Um, this is emphasized by the willingness to pay from people on a monthly subscription basis um, that could actually make the overall service sustainable. But there's also many other direction um, you can go. We had projects in the elderly care uh, domain and um, there's other scenarios in cross home applications or demand side management that nicely fits the capabilities of IoT crawler, but also makes uh, security and privacy even more important. But then there's also a second round. Okay, Martin, I'm sorry, yes. I will have to uh, move you on a little bit. <laughs> yes, so I'm just my last sentence. Um, okay, so, and, thank you. And, uh, and the last one is the um, IoT data integration um, as a general topic. And uh, with that, I can conclude. And uh, thank you very much for, the, for your attention. Um, I hope to see you in the breakout session. And uh, then Michael uh, Biliatis from uh, Aarhus University will continue with um, the building MVP. Thank you, Martin. Let me share my screen. Um, yeah. Uh, can you see the screen now? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Martin, and uh, everybody for uh, coming here. So this is the Aarhus University user case. Um, it's about uh, smart booking in uh, uh, the campus which uh, I'm uh, working at uh, BTEC in uh, Herning. Uh, here is a team which uh, involved uh, Mirko Presser, myself, uh, for the technical things, Kampik and the uh, uh, We are interested in uh, the center which I'm working more on the digital uh, business development and EOT interventions. So the challenge is that uh, for every uh, business or study meeting or lecture or social event, people they need to uh, book in advance or in real time a, a room and then uh, find uh, uh, if it is available on availability, basically. So the motivation is like uh, to make uh, life uh, convenient, pleasant, and it has stakeholders uh, user experience uh, involving digital technologies. For example, for students, they can find a local place to study, they can find uh, a local event to socialize, and they can find uh, a student internship or a project uh, to work during their studies. Our solution, uh, we developed uh, over the project, a mobile phone uh, app and uh, a dashboard, which uh, you can uh, set uh, in real time uh, available uh, uh, locations, uh, so we can uh, book it in advance, uh, making sure that uh, you comply with the security and the privacy issues. Like, um, so the test bed which uh, we use is like the side uh, uh, of uh, BTEC in Arcus University in Herning. Uh, we deployed like uh, many sensors in 20 public rooms uh, using uh, LoRa 1 and 4G uh, and cloud computing. We developed like uh, Android and the iOS uh, mobile phone app. We had uh, developed a, a digital dashboard for tracking uh, the use of the um, um, uh, rooms and also the data and we involved also like uh, digital forms for interviews with uh, um, stakeholders so the feedback from uh, users who ran it uh, like the evaluation twice like so the first time it was about uh, 
how will you do, how will you like to use the the, uh, the application so we came with uh, uh, the need that they need the mobile phone app so that's how we developed the mobile phone app and then after we developed the phone, mobile phone app uh, we came back and we asked the users what would you like to see in the you know, like apart from a booking like uh, system so they came with uh, projects and uh, internships, like you know, finding uh, projects and internships, like for their studies. And uh, finally, like uh, business potential uh, for the smart room, uh, room booking, which we developed, like uh, this uh, application can be used like um, in other uh, smart camps uh, buildings uh, in University of Argos, but also other uh, universities. And uh, we can uh, use uh, EOT data integration, as uh, people uh, previously mentioned, like uh, for small building, local networks, and automated data integration. And that's from me. I'll uh, pass the um, uh, word to Tarek from uh, Sare for uh, the user case. Tarek, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, hello, hi, good morning, everyone. So uh, my name is Tarek al -Sala. I just put my slides up. Uh, okay, so I hope you can see my slides. So uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Tarek El Sala. I'm from the University of Surrey, and uh, I'll be presenting uh, a, a use case that we've uh, applied uh, using the IT Color framework. So uh, what I'll do now, just start a bit about our uh, team. So basically we, we work on, uh, we're researchers and developers who work on machine learning adaptive algorithms for continual learning and time series data analysis for uh, various IT solutions. Um, our work in IT Caller uh, is focused on developing uh, new algorithms and enablers, uh, essentially for uh, context generation, discovery, and monitoring in uh, IT networks. The domain of uh, healthcare or LDD care is. Don't fuck up, you nasty bitch. I don't know how the fuck you jump on my side, you little nasty ass nigga. Shut your little bitch ass up, you dirty bitch. Who the fuck is this long head ass little jawbreaker looking ass nigga and Miss Mary? Shut your little bitch ass up, you ugly ass nigga, you dirty ass bitch. Yeah, really I think I can hear some. Don't know that. Um, I'll continue. <laughs> uh, so the domain is uh, interesting in terms of uh, IoT because it can enable elderly people with conditions to live in their homes uh, more and promote uh, the prevention of uh, their hospitalization. So uh, essentially what the challenge here is to provide a smart elderly care solution uh, for monitoring uh, of senior citizens' health to support time intervention and improve quality of life while also preserving their, their privacy allow better utilization of time for primary care services, uh, hospitals and technology uh, uh, integration. Um, and the potential obviously uh, stakeholders we've identified are essentially uh, clinicians who will be able to remotely monitor patients uh, to help clinical uh, teams in uh, decision making about uh, patient, patients, uh, patients um, health. Uh, carers uh, who are notified to provide support uh, when needed, so uh, if uh, a member, uh, if uh, is in, is in, uh, in difficulty, um, they'll be able to to take action as soon as possible, and also telecare uh, services where they can utilize a, a, a comprehensive solution for monitoring, uh, search, and and security uh, of uh, patient sensitive. So essentially the objective here is to uh, be able to search for personal health and environmental devices deployed in the homes and also uh, for detected patterns of users. So detected patterns meaning basically uh, uh, in, in our context, for example, uh, detecting uh, levels of activity of senior citizens, uh, which can also uh, indicate uh, their uh, progression in terms of frailty or if they're uh, um, uh, facing any, any troubles uh, in the home. So the, the solution basically uh, obviously involves uh, making use of the IT um, uh, components from the IT Caller framework 
where we want to kind of adjust issues like, uh, for example, in deployment, you would expect to have anomalous data uh, uh, from irregular patterns, and being able to de 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 uh, detect that. Um, having, uh, well, also um, dealing with missing readings, which are possible due to, for example, gateway failures, uh, which can happen in, uh, quite commonly in IoT deployments, uh, or also could be due to readings uh, missing uh, if, if, if you were to have uh, like a mobile solution due to uh, uh, depletion in, in, in uh, batteries of, of the devices. And essentially all this data will then uh, be, be uh, uh, fed into the, the, the uh, IoT Caller Framework through uh, obviously um, uh, the, the MDR repository uh, and also uh, which then will then uh, make the information exposed to all the other components which will then be used to detect uh, activity levels from sensors um, and also uh, enable the, uh, the search and discovery of, of, of these devices uh, uh, for uh, different uh, uh, health uh, um, services. Um, and essentially making use of uh, security uh, components which will uh, allow or, or enable the security of the information and also uh, you know, uh, authorizing consented uh, uh, users to access that information. Um, so, uh, in terms of how we uh, went about uh, testing, it, testing it, so we, we have a, a, a healthy aging test bed where we uh, deploy a, a number of sensors in the, uh, in the test bed. Uh, essentially, what we've used uh, to test uh, the, uh, our MVP uh, was to uh, make use of data generated from a subset of these sensors. So essentially, um, uh, the, a door sensor uh, connected to a fridge uh, and to uh, uh, different rooms. Uh, 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 so for, yeah, multiple different rooms where we install um, uh, motion sensors. Um, this data is then fed into the, uh, uh, our, insta our instantiation of the uh, IoT Explorer uh, uh, framework where it's then um, uh, basically monitored using the monitoring component where um, uh, if there is any uh, faults that are detected or uh, whether uh, f f due to er erroneous data or missing data, then it is then handled by uh, the, the component where it's then uh, imputed and uh, or corrected and then uh, fed back to the, uh, to the repository. We also make use of the semantic enrichment component for uh, uh, pattern extraction, which is then used for uh, detecting uh, different uh, levels of activity, uh, where it basically essentially goes through a process where um, uh, sensor data is aggregated throughout the day and then is clustered. And then from that clustering, uh, um, a determination whether um, uh, the, the patient is. Um, Experiencing high, uh, high, high or low activities. And we also make use of other components for uh, search and discovery, like the indexing and ranking component. Uh, so, this is kind of like the, uh, the stage that we're at, but we're also uh, intending to uh, then include also the security components um, to, to enable the, the security and privacy uh, aspects. So, in terms of uh, feedback, initial feedback that we got, so. Okay, so, Tarek, uh, yes, one yeah, minute. One minute, okay. So in terms of uh, potential, uh, potential stakeholders, um, so uh, we uh, uh, collaborate with, with, with uh, a local NHS trust. Uh, trust. So uh, from their health tech lead, basically uh, they, 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 they kind of uh, uh, were impressed by the idea. Uh, and from, uh, from their experience in terms of, you know, all, all these sensors that are out there in the market, what would, what would be good is to basic, basically be able to um, access data, not just from the home, or also from um, maybe from uh, uh, town or city deployments and, uh, regarding environmental data that, that can be fused to be able to also uh, address um, other issues. Uh, for example, in this case, like uh, uh, asthmatic uh, uh, patients, where then uh, they could then be um, uh, 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 fused and, and also used uh, in terms of uh, 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 pattern detection uh, to be able to feed this information to, to primary care uh, services so that they can make better decisions um, um, on, you know, on uh, being able to treat the patients as soon as possible. Um, so just to list what are the uh, business potentials, uh, essentially um, services involve uh, activity uh, daily uh, living, 
uh, some being able to monitor monitor these uh, activities we're doing uh, for analyzing multimodal health and environmental da environmental data, providing assisted care services for responding to incidents, uh, providing a marketplace for vendor agnostic access to patient sensor data, which will be uh, could be made available to to, to private health uh, services. Uh, and also uh, enabling a federated telecare uh, system among uh, healthcare uh, health service regions uh, or primary care trusts uh, in, in a region or a country. And, uh, that ends Thank you, Tarek. So uh, that was all for our small smart home and buildings uh, presentations. And now we move on to smart energy and uh, industry 4.0. Uh, so I give the word now to Rohit. Thank you, Marian. I'll share my screen. Thank you, Rohit. Okay, perfect. I hope you are able to see my screen. Yes. Okay, perfect. Then I'll start. Um, hi, my name is Rohit and I'm from Digital Works and I'm here to present the machine monitoring MVP. It's one of the MVP that, we, that has been developed under IP crawler project. And in my team, in our team, we have Mikko Ross that you will keep hearing him and myself and we are from Digital Works. At Digital Works, we are specialized in IoT projects and in the cloud-based solutions and we make websites and mobile applications. So um, as Antonio mentioned, the industry 4.0 and the spread of IoT technology, the number of IoT devices that has been gone exponentially up, the data that has been generated by these devices is quite humongous. And the challenges that it, it poses to any kind of IoT solution is handling of this enormous data. And um, the machines which are embedded with, with these IoT devices, for example, in a manufacturing industry, the monitoring of these devices and these machines are important and uh, it can be done if we can, we can um, collect this data efficiently, store it and analyze this data. And um, because uh, there's no existing solution for that, not an efficient solution for that. And because of that, we have the high maintenance cost and there is no real time data gathering. And very often we see that the machines go down and it affects the productivity of the machine. The solution that we provide that we use the potential of IoT crawler components that has been described in the previous presentations. And with these component, components we store and retrieve this context data about machines efficiently. And it also possible with these components uh, to crawl, index and rank this data. And this has been intuitive, intuitively um, with, with the intuitive dashboard, this can be visualized with our MVP application. And this MVP application, it collects the real-time data and it can generate the insight to provide the predictive maintenance of the machines. The architecture of this machine, this uh, application we have developed as a single page application, which means that when you start the application, it connects to the server and gets all the resources which are needed to function this um, application. And when customer interacts with uh, the application, it dynamically gets the data from the server without reloading the pages. So it makes it more fast and efficient. In terms of the overall architecture of this application, it has these three core components. On one side, we have the controller, which collects the data from the sensors and it sends it feeds this data to the IoT crawler framework where this data has been analyzed and this data can be accessed through the MVP application. And this application can be accessed on desktop, mobile, and on our laptops. So this is the dashboard of the MVP application. It gives an overview of what's going on with the machine monitoring. And in the data section, it, we can visualize the data, the machine data, which is available. The business potential of this uh, machine monitoring application is 
if you see uh, there are multiple reports and by 2025 the machine monitoring market will be worth of 3.9 billion us dollar and using this uh, machine monitoring application, it can be used to increase the productivity of a manufacturing plant. It can also reduce the downtime of machine because it collects and analyzes the data so that um, the, it can, the predictive maintenance could be done about these machines. In terms of stakeholders, this uh, application can be used by a production manager, flow manager, maintenance engineer, and machine operator in a manufacturing plant. And, with this application, they, the, all these stakeholders, they can progress, they can get the production progress, they can monitor the, app, monitor the machines quite well, and they could do the predictive maintenance. Um, that's all for my side, thanks. And I give the floor to Andreas now, thanks. So thanks, Rohit, uh, just share my screen. Can you all see my presentation? Yes, thank you, Andreas. Okay, perfect. So uh, welcome to the uh, Siemens use case, uh, which we call discovery of small flexibilities in low voltage grids. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce our project team. Uh, so my, my name is Andreas Fernbach. Uh, you will also meet uh, Josie, so uh, Josie Pereira, uh, later in the breakout session. And uh, there are also other guys who um, participated from our side in uh, the last three years in the project, namely Patrick Schneider uh, and Stefan Bischoff. Um, so first of all, uh, let me uh, talk a little bit about the background uh, of our use case. So um, as the title um, says, yeah, uh, the, our um, use case is, is located in the, in the domain of electrical power grids. And um, yeah, so uh, why flexibilities? Um, so electrical power grids, uh, you know, uh, always needs to be balanced. So the, uh, the, uh, the, the amount of power fed in uh, in a power grid uh, must always be equal to the, to the amount of power that uh, is withdrawn uh, from it. And uh, it's not always easy uh, to keep uh, this balance uh, because, um, yeah, the um, uh, grid participants, uh, which are um, volatile and, and uh, have uh, fluctuating uh, behavior. So think of, um, yeah, these new energy resources for example, uh, like uh, wind turbines or, or um, uh, photovoltaic plant, uh, plants uh, on the on the uh, generation side, um, but also on the uh, consumer side, like uh, the increasing amount of um, of electric vehicles uh, that needs to be charged uh, once. So. Um, yeah, these, these fluctuating um, behavior of grid participants uh, needs to be uh, needs to be equalized somehow. So if on the one side one uh, increases uh, uh, generation, then uh, there needs to be one on, on the other side uh, that uh, increases uh, consumption and, and vice versa. And uh, yeah, there's, there's one way to achieve this, namely uh, by uh, flexible assets. So um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go into, the, into this topic a little uh, deeper later. Uh, one thing uh, I, want, I, was to, I wanted to emphasize is uh, that this topic becomes more and more, uh, more, and more uh, important because of the uh, because of the uh, energy transition. So, the um, these prosumers uh, I mentioned before uh, will uh, play um, um, more and more a significant role in power grids. Um, so. Um, 
Yeah, about flexibilities. Uh, in the past, uh, this problem uh, was also present so that uh, this balance in, in power grids uh, need, needed to be achieved. And the classical approach uh, was done uh, using big um, assets like uh, special power plants or, or industry plants uh, who provided the necessary uh, flexibilities um, at the, the required time. Um, this is, um, yeah, um, the classical approach and uh, it needs uh, some, some um, process, a process which is called pre-qualification of uh, uh, such big assets, uh, but is um, not practical for um, like smaller assets, uh, which could also provide flexibilities. Um, in our case, we, um, we are looking at uh, the same uh, kinds of grid participants which are actually, uh, actually causing these problems, uh, namely uh, PV plants uh, and uh, electric vehicles, uh, which needs to be charged, uh, heat pumps and, and uh, other uh, new consumers, uh, which can, on, on the other hand, uh, also act as providers for flexibilities. Um, but what, what we need, therefore, is uh, some mechanism uh, to, to coordinate this high number uh, of assets uh, so that from the outside, uh, it looks like uh, one big uh, flexibility uh, provider uh, in the end. And uh, this is uh, what we call uh, an aggregator. So an aggregator uh, collects flexibilities from these uh, small flexible assets. So from home PV plants, from uh, heat pumps, from uh, electric vehicle chargers and uh, provides it at the right time and uh, of the right amount to uh, distinct consumers like uh, grid operators or, or um, some other roles in um, necessary for grid operation. And um, yeah, here is where uh, IoT crawler comes into place. Namely, uh, this aggregator needs to uh, um, be able to search for uh, the right kind of uh, flexible assets uh, in the right grid area, for, for, for example, in the right grid segment, and um, also uh, regarding some, some other properties. So uh, what we see here on this slide is, um, yeah, um, we have some of these uh, assets already described, some, some uh, heat pumps, some, some PV plants, some electric vehicles um, distributed in the grid and also some, uh, yeah, uh, some, some uh, battery energy storage systems, uh, which also um, become more, more important. Uh, distributed in, in a grid. And we want to search for uh, a distinct uh, kind of flexibilities in uh, a distinct grid area. So uh, we, take, we take our IoT crawler uh, and uh, go to um, the search functionality, to, uh, the search form, and uh, we enter a certain um, search criteria. So we want to, uh, to uh, look up uh, assets at a certain location. We need a, a certain type of flexibility. Um, yeah, maybe we want to search uh, only for, for a distinct uh, type of asset and uh, maybe some, some other criteria. Um, then we receive, uh, as an aggregator, we uh, receive the results from IoT crawler. And uh, there we, uh, then we need uh, some, some uh, ranking. So uh, yeah, like in a web search, uh, we want to, to have uh, the most suitable um, search results uh, listed first. And we can also uh, select um, different ranking criteria. And uh, what we see on the, uh, on the right part uh, of, of this slide, uh, I hope this, this uh, uh, zoom overlay doesn't disturb the presentation. Okay, um, yeah, we see uh, a list of search results. So on the first comes uh, some, some PV plant uh, providing 10 kilowatts of flexibility, then some, some battery and so on. 
uh, and what we uh, so this is this is already ranked. Uh, and what we finally need to do is um, when we need a certain amount of uh, flexibility as an aggregator, we just need to pick uh, the first uh, n ones uh, till we reach the amount of flexibility uh, we needed. And then we uh, can go uh, to our customer. To, um, uh, uh, one minute, Andreas. Okay. Uh, I'm already almost finished. Uh, so <laughs> this, this was the teaser. <laughs> From uh, from our side, uh, I hope we can um, uh, uh, as many of you if you uh, welcome in our breakout session uh, where we go into uh, more detail about the prototype architecture and and we uh, also will show you uh, some demo. So thanks. Wow, thank you, Andreas. Uh, maybe stop screen sharing. This would be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can continue with our next uh, presentation, which is all about the topic of smart cities. So we'll have a look on how sensor data uh, can be used in a smart city environment uh, for the citizens purpose and how to democratize as well the data of sensors. There's one presentation of the city of Aarhus and we'll, got a, we'll have a second presentation um, from uh, the University of Musia and Odense about how to use IoT crawler in the search and optimizing for a smart parking use case. And by that, I'm just handing over to uh, the city of Aarhus uh, use case on IoT crawler. So I'm just waiting. Thank you, Mirko. We'll be ready. Okay, Sebastian, thank you very much. It, the stage is yours. Thank you. I will just share my presentation here. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, yeah, so uh, thank you, Mirko. And uh, I'll pre present our use case from the city of Aarhus. Uh, so this is the team that has been working within the IoT crawler project for the last three years. Uh, so we have Mar Mariana and myself on the top and then uh, our development team at the bottom. So the city of Aarhus is the second largest city of, uh, of Denmark with a, a population of 350,000 citizens. And uh, uh, if we say so ourselves, we are one of the uh, European frontrunners in a, in a smart city context, uh, and we were the first Danish municipality to have an open data portal. So we are working a lot with this uh, smart city uh, domain. So the challenge that we uh, approach with the IoT crawler framework uh, and, uh, and the smart city uh, domain is the, this uh, technological gap that's between the citizens and the smart city. Um, so many cities have open data available, uh, but not a lot of effort has been made to make the make tools uh, to make the data meaningful and relevant to the citizens. Uh, so we are really focused in on the citizen aspect and how we can utilize them as a resource in this smart city development and in a meaningful way. So our uh, developed solution is called the Urban Data Mission, uh, and uh, we hope to uh, at least uh, tackle this challenge uh, to some degree uh, with this uh, tool so we can involve the citizens in a more democratic way in the smart city development. Um, so uh, the stakeholders that we are uh, mainly addressing with our solution is uh, tech savvy citizens, but also active citizenship oriented communities. And then of course, uh, smart city stakeholders and other smart cities. Uh, and while we were um, uh, doing this uh, user-centered design process, uh, we uncovered a first mover opportunity within the educational area for a, a tool like this uh, to support the innovation curriculum, but also the students' motivations to tackle uh, climate and environmental uh, issues. So we have been using them as a, a, as a sort of sounding board for our solution uh, throughout this development time. Um, so as mentioned, our platform is called Urban Data Mission, and it's an IoT-enabled citizen science platform, which is open source and built on top of the IoT Corolla framework. Uh, so it's, it is this tool for increasing uh, data literacy and uh, democratizing the development of the smart city. And also it works with this uh, vision of having a 
local or even global IoT search and present where you can have data, IoT data available from the city, but also whatever the citizens and maybe companies are presenting within this uh, IoT search engine. So you can see some screenshots of the, our solution to the right. And so it's based around this uh, map, uh, map view uh, where you can see these uh, urban data missions uh, going on in the city. Uh, so some of the functionalities that are, that are unique to our tool is, uh, is this, uh, that we are using it, uh, this mission-oriented approach. So instead of having data kept away in, a, in an open data portal, we are trying to create this tool with missions uh, to, give it, to give the data a, a purpose and some context to motivate uh, citizens to get involved. So one of the missions that we have developed is this curated one about the healthy way to school, which contains information about the air quality thresholds, uh, where we engage citizens and students to uh, measure their, their, uh, their routes to uh, and from school to find uh, the most healthiest way uh, if, yeah, on this route. Um, and then we also have more uh, or less uh, open missions where citizens can define whatever they want to use uh, IoT data for um so another functionality which is really core to the iot crawler framework is this uh, that you can search whatever iot data is available within the search engine so your own data or from your own iot devices that you have connected to the search engine or whatever the city exposes to the to the to the uh, search engine and then you can combine it uh, you can add these uh, data sources into your missions and explore and compare data to find new insights and correlations between the data. Uh, for instance, traffic counts versus uh, noise pollution levels uh, on your own devices. Um, and then we also have this uh, a mission log where in the missions, when you compare the data, you can provide uh, your own comments and insights about the data. So it's sort of like a, a, a diary uh, for your uh, data mission. Uh, it, this uh, area also gives alerts. So, so uh, we have uh, yeah, utilized uh, the quality of information uh, uh, functionalities and fault detection and fault recovery uh, functionalities of IoT crawler into this uh, platform as well. So if there's uh, missing data from, uh, from devices, it will come up as an alert and then uh, it will give the imputed value uh, based on, on this uh, components that we're using. And also when you're selecting the sensors that should be part of your mission, then you can also get information about the quality of information. So you have a, a, a better understanding if this is a good sensor or not to use uh, for your mission. Uh, the feedback we have gotten so far from our uh, stakeholders and uh, within the smart city domain and educators is that this, the, this mission oriented approach is quite unique and also within the educational area then uh, this could be used for physical geography and uh, mapping local environmental problems um, and also that the concept for using this as a tool for citizen engagement through IoT is really uh, a strong uh, uh, the uh, uh, concept um, uh, and then most importantly to us is that also the, the users we have asked right now uh, so far has uh, indicated either really agree or strongly agree that uh, this is a relevant tool for increasing data literacy among citizens and also that is a tool for democratizing the smart city and also that it it, it is an easy way to compare data from different uh, sensors and platforms. Uh, so right now we see the following uh, potentials for the further uh, extending our solution. Uh, so uh, within this open source context, we see this uh, tool being further developed by other citizen science or crowdsourcing stakeholders and communities. This could be, for instance, the Smart Citizen Kit uh, organization that you might know, or it could be uh, further developed as a citizen science as a service, such as, uh, as spotterun.net does, uh, which is also a citizen science uh, tool, but not uh, IoT enabled. And then within the city of Aarhus, we also see uh, this tool uh, being further developed and also supporting some of the internal agendas uh, that we have. Uh, so we are developing now, establishing a new civic tech unit within the uh, city of Aarhus, where we will have uh, future crowd sensing projects, but this could be a relevant tool. And also we have uh, uh, the new uh, Aarhus Climate Action Plan, which has this societal outreach track, which could be a, a tool uh, that we can uh, use for, for, for urban dynamism. And then we have uh, the Digital Citizenship uh, Initiative, where this would also be uh, something uh, to explore further. 
Um, we will uh, introduce more in the breakout sessions. So uh, I hope uh, uh, this was uh, interesting for you. And then I will uh, give the word over to uh, Petro to present the Moshe case. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Sebastian, for introducing me. Uh, we'll now start sharing my screen. I hope you can see it. Okay. So, hi. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Pedro Gonzalez, uh, and I work for the University of Murcia. And uh, yeah, let me put this here. So I will be presenting here the smart parking, another smart city approach uh, for the uses of uh, IoT crawler. Uh, in this case, the smart parking application is application uh, meant for finding a parking in the city of Murcia. So um, the team uh, that has worked in this uh, project uh, is a partnership uh, between uh, the University of Murcia and Odin's Solutions. Odin's Solutions is a, a company based in Murcia which develops different IoT solutions and services for smart cities and smart agriculture. They are also actively participating in the definition of the new Etsy uh, standard for the next generation service interface for linked data that Antonio previously talked about, uh, also called NGSILD. And as part of the Odin's team, we have Juan Antonio Martinez and Juan Andres Sanchez Segado, uh, among others. And from the University of Murcia, we are interested in a broad range of aspects of IoT, like architecture, security, and cyber physical systems. And among the crew members of the UMU who have participated in this project are, of course, Antonio Scarmeta, Aurora Gonzalez, and myself, among others. Oh, sorry. So before we talk about parking, uh, we must talk about traffic. As we all know, cities offer many different services and amenities, and moving around in and out of the city is mainly still done uh, via vehicles. So heavy traffic has become one of the key staples of most big cities. Interestingly, uh, interestingly enough, uh, one of the sources or culprits of that traffic is directly tied to parking availability. It is difficult to park in the city. Cars roam around for extended periods of time and searching for a free parking spot, it's time consuming. It can be exasperating at times, but it is also wasteful on resources and it contributes heavily to air pollution. So a number of uh, uh, parking solutions uh, in the form of web applications and mobile applications already exist. And as part of the market research that has been performed during this project, we studied many of those solutions. At least 10 of those uh, were studied. And what we found was that they offered location information of the main parking sites, both private parkings and regulated parking zones. Some of them included extended parking information, including availability. Others offered the possibility of booking ahead of time you stay in a private parking. But in general, they lacked uh, information regarding availability. In fact, none of them offer regulated parking zones availability information. And this information can be really, really helpful uh, in reducing the roaming around the city, searching for a free parking spot. Yeah, uh, as those are cheaper and thus uh, generally preferred than most, by most frequent users. So they also lacked functionalities that allow to plan uh, the parking activity ahead of time. Say, for instance, that tomorrow you have to go downtown uh, to make some arrangements. It would be great to have an estimate of the availability of parking so that you can perhaps plan ahead of time. You could choose a parking like a little bit farther away and walk the final distance or even take a bus. So we can, came up with our current proposal, smart parking. With smart parking, we set on fixing some of the gaps that we saw in currently existing solutions. We offer availability information, both for private parkings and RPCs. We included useful information on the private parking sites, such as the, uh, ex uh, such as the charging facilities for, for electric vehicles, or if the parking is uh, adapted for people with some kind of a mobility restriction. We also applied machine learning algorithms to one year worth of RPC data creating models that allow us to make accurate predictions on the availability of parking spots in those zones, which allows 
users of the application to actively plan their parking ahead of time. But we didn't stop there. Uh, by leveraging the semantic nature of the NGSILD core of IoT crawler, which offers data models flexible enough to adapt to very different data sources, we not only opened uh, the gates to adding real-time information on the availability of those uh, parkings, we also opened new possibilities like adding information from other providers like uh, university parkings, public buildings, or even more. And we will touch up on that uh, a little bit later. Obviously, gathering this much information from our stakeholders implies that security must be set in place. In our experience in smart parking, parking providers want to have different levels of control on whom and how access their information. Once again, IoT Crawler provides a robust framework uh, that allows us to specify policies on who can retrieve and update which information, along with a sophisticated trust mechanism based in blockchain. This security also allows us to have different user roles, which will be allowed different uh, sets of information, opening another gate for innovation. We will later see again. <laughs> Finally, IoT Crawler also provides another interesting feature in our solution. It is fault detection and data monitoring, which allows us, again, to detect some of the data providers' uh, data uh, might be having some issues with the updates, for instance, so that we can notify the user on a possible degradation on the quality of the information they are getting. But not only that, they, we can even provide estimates based on machine learning algorithms that are capable of reacting to those detected failures and provide with those uh, um, uh, predictions, so to speak. So, so far, we have uh, tested our application with a number of real users, which have provided us with really valuable feedback. Uh, Obviously, due to COVID-19 restrictions, we have had to resort to online surveys and online forms to gather that information. But so far, uh, good evaluations have come from the users, which have also provided us with uh, some helpful suggestions on how to grow the functionalities of smart parking. Uh, and also pointed us at some of the things that need some improving, mostly technical stuff uh, that are being steadily ironed out. So finally, regarding the business potentials for smart parking, we identified a number, of, uh, a number of them, but here we wanted to capture these two. The first one being the most sensible one, exporting smart parking to other cities and adding more parking providers to the solution, which can make for a really useful service. But the most interesting one, or at least in my opinion, and which I think deserves further consideration is the potential that this platform gives us for sharing economies or collaborative economies. So it, can, it, it so happens that one of the most valued ideas that came up uh, during the ideation process in the very early stages of the project was that of making the best use of resources, including those parking places that are vacated by users who commute to the outskirts of the city or to the other side of the city or to other cities every day. Those parking places could be rented for micro periods or could be shared among users. Just, just imagine the potential that, that tapping into that bag of, resource, of resources could have, the number of individually owned parking places that could be put to use and the potential that it could have in reducing the traffic in, in a city. So, uh, that is all for now. Thanks for listening. And I hope to, to see you next in the breakout session to take a look at the, at the application. So Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Pedro. And thank you, uh, thank you Sebastian. So uh, uh, the next step is really for us to receive the feedback um, as I just wrote in the chat. So um, now I will give the word back to Mirko in just a minute, but we really, really hope that you will stay and give us some feedback on these cases uh, in just a few minutes. So don't go away. Yes, um, no, no, don't, don't go away. I mean, there are some more exciting things now uh, coming up. First of all, we have prepared another slider because now 
as you have seen a little bit more about IoT crawl and the use cases, I think it makes sense to go for another Slido. So we have prepared a question. Um, can you just please, uh, we have posted the link to the chat and now uh, we'll sh share the screen so that we can go for another Slido, Slido here. So our question to you is, after you have seen now the use cases of I IoT crawler and what it's all about, well, can you see yourself applying the IoT crawler framework and the components to your own context? We don't know your context, but I mean, we built something which is rather generic, so it could be transferred to other use cases and contexts as well. And so this is just our invitation to you. Use our Slido, go to slido.com, type in the hashtag 764281, and I see the graph is growing, which is uh, great. And we see people uh, just voting. And I'm delighted that, I mean, people think they can use the IoT crawler results in the framework for their own perspective. And if you don't know yet, well, um, we are continuing with our webinar here because the next steps are, will be that you can get more detailed information in our webinars. But meanwhile, before we do that, let me first just sum up a little bit about what we have seen here um, in the IoT crawler. And I mean, to me, it was really amazing watching these use cases and results. And I mean, for everybody who has joined maybe a little bit later, uh, a room reset here as well. So IoT crawl is about uh, creating a framework and a tool set for search in the Internet of Things. And this is so important because the Internet of Things is the data source, but how to implement really a secure and privacy respecting way of search. And that's what we have seen here as well in the use cases. And to me, rather impressive. Um, it's open source, so you can go to the GitHub, you can implement the stuff by yourself. You can just ask as well the people who are involved here in the research project. So to me, it was amazing to see the results now. It has been a three years journey to come to this point, and this is as well uh, great. And to see it as well deployed on so many different regions and use cases in Europe. So we had been uh, in Denmark, we had been in Spain, we had been in Germany, um, and as well in Surrey in the United uh, Kingdom. I hope I didn't forget anyone, sorry. Um, and by that, I would like to hand over to the project coordinator, Antonio Scametta, um, with his uh, resume on what he has seen now here. Um, so Antonio, are you there? Yep, thanks, uh, fine, uh, uh, Mirko. So again, thanks for, for, I mean, for all of you for being uh, uh, until here, I always said. As I, already, as I already mentioned by Mirko, uh, I think that still we, we are asking you a little bit of, uh, more uh, contributors uh, contribution now, uh, because now we will, we will want to have a split over three different sessions uh, with the idea that uh, in each of the sessions it will be just half an hour, so we don't get you too much time, uh, much of your time. But there we would like to, uh, to give you some more detailed demos and, and discussion about the different uh, um, MVPs that we already have generated, and more specifically, we would like to have your feedback. Your feedback in the sense uh, of, as I already mentioned, uh, about ideas, about some topics already appear on the chat that you are asking for. Uh, think about how you understand that there are some aspects that need to be covered. Also, how do you think these kind of tools can be used on your own environment or your own sectors, etc. So, so for that, uh, uh, we we ask you please to to go and stay a little bit more and help us in order to to fine tune basically what could be our uh, future directions. I would say in in some sense. Also, I uh, uh, we already have prepared a survey where some of the questions similar to the one of the uh, previously asked you are already there. I put it in the chat. Uh, also, we will send them again for you uh, by, by email in case you, you don't have now time to, to fill it. It's very short. It's just to ask you, I mean, a simple question about some of the aspects that we already have present. And, and, and that will be very great, uh, useful for us, as I already mentioned, in order to, 
to understand uh, the, the way we can uh, we can leverage, I would say, the result of this project in the future, because our intention, and that's quite important, is, is not to stop here. Obviously, the project, the project has already a, a, an end, very close, but uh, we would like to continue, and we continue maybe with other projects, but also with some kind of exploitation. Uh, there are some spin-off uh, uh, that already, already are, are part of the, pro uh, the project, and in that way, we will see uh, see how our our results will uh, will reach you and maybe reach the society in general in that sense. So um, as I already mentioned, I invite all of you to go to this uh, to these uh, three breakout sessions. You need to select one or the other because at the end, as I mentioned, will be separate channels. But uh, uh, hope you at least have enjoyed all, all this part. And thank you again to all to all the team, to all the presenters, to obviously to the project officers to join to be here. And thanks again for your for your uh, um, for, for for coming and and, and uh, hearing uh, our our results. So Marianne, I give you the turn now. Yes, thank you, Antonio and uh, Mirko. So I will just handle the practicalities. So uh, in a minute, we will start breaking you out in these three sessions where you will be able to meet on the smart home and building. Uh, Martin Storbach, we already saw, and his uh, colleague, Pavel Smirnov, and uh, our partners from Aarhus University. So uh, if you go and watch in a minute, there will uh, appear this um, uh, breakout session button, which we ask you to press, and then you will be able to change, uh, choose a room. Uh, the other option is, of course, our partners from Siemens and Digital Works, where we have uh, Yossi and Andreas and Rohit, who will be very excited to tell you a little bit more in detail about their industry-oriented cases. So please also, uh, some of us uh, would like to uh, receive some feedback on the industry cases. And the final option is uh, uh, to talk some more with uh, Petro and Sebastian, from, uh, from Odin Solutions and the uh, University of Murcia and uh, the city of Aarhus. And I will also be in the Smart City session as a moderator. So uh, that is practically all. As I said in the beginning, we will not be returning to this main session. So uh, you are uh, free to leave after, after this. But uh, thank you also on the team's behalf. So I think the breakout okay. sessions are now um, being posted. So we start. So if you are interested to learn more now, choose the breakout session you want to like. Uh, just choose it here and then please go to the breakout rooms. Um, the main audience plenary event uh, is now dividing into the breakout sessions, which are more specific. And as Marianne said, will not come back here. So it's just a breakout sessions. There are separate moderators out there. And Marianne, uh, why people are pushing to the breakout sessions. Thank you very much to Doc One in Denmark for moderating this session. I mean, this was awesome, isn't it? Yep. It sure was. Thank you to you also, Mirko. Yeah. And as well, thank you very much, Antonio, to Spain. I mean, Super. I, I would say in a Eurovision song contest, well, um, point. <laughs> as Ben. <laughs> but you know, Germany always gets one point. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. So please, if you haven't done it already yet, the breakout sessions are open. Please go to the breakout sessions. Yeah. So. I'm checking. I mean, yes. actually, people are, in, are going to the different session, but there's a lot of people already uh, uh, that haven't done it. So please. You need to go to the to the three points that you have at the at the bottom, and there you can select this the the group that you you want to share. Exactly. To enter, sorry. Yep. So yes. um... so please give it a go. Uh, you don't have to stay the whole time if you can, but it would be very nice if you uh, would at least give it a shot. And uh, I can see a lot of people are joining now. So. Yep. Uh, Excellent. Also, please don't forget to fill the, the, the questionnaire now or later. We will, in any case, we will send this information again to the, through, uh, through email. Uh, uh, so uh, I think it's part of the feedback that we will quite interest to, to receive from you.